Hey, AirZoo fans, it's Troy Thrash, CEO of the AirZoo, coming to you from one of my favorite places in the AirZoo. We're at the Flight Discovery Center, and I'm in our Restoration Center. This is such a cool place that every visitor has the opportunity to see what we're doing in restoring two World War II aircraft that have been on the bottom of Lake Michigan for at least 65 years each. Now, many people don't know that from 1942 to 1945, during World War II, the Navy needed more pilots to be flying primarily in the South Pacific. They didn't have any aircraft carriers that they could spare. And so they purchased two ships that took people and cargo up and down the Great Lakes. They flattened their decks, then basically make aircraft carriers out of these cargo ships. Now the challenge was though, these cargo ships were only about two thirds the size of an actual aircraft carrier. So the Navy over three years was training 15,000 pilots to do what is arguably the most difficult thing for a new pilot or really any pilot to do. And that is to land their aircraft on a moving ship. Every day during those three years, these two ships, the USS Wolverine and the USS Sable would leave the Navy Pier and make that training happen. And again, over those three years, 15,000 pilots were trained, but at the same time, almost 130 aircraft were lost to the bottom of Lake Michigan. The Air Zoo, like I said, is restoring two of them right now. Now there's lots of challenges with this. We are, we've got the FM2 Wildcat behind me the Wildcat was on the bottom of Lake Michigan for 68 years. During that time, the aircraft for probably about the first 65 of those years did a really great job just maintaining its, its structural integrity. But soon invasive species like the quagga mussels came in and they just latched on to these aircraft and created this acidic environment that really destroyed many of the metals that are on these aircraft. So if we look over here, we have a supercharger from the FM2 Wildcat made mostly of magnesium. And you can see how that acidic environment oxidized and ultimately destroyed the magnesium. However, there are some that this is the, uh, the tail cone that goes up on top there of the tail. This is made out of aluminum. You can see it held up a little bit better, but you can see there's definitely a lot of destruction going on there. And then other pieces like here, you can see there are things that are made out of steel. This is actually the tail hook made out of steel, the tail hook of the FM2 Wildcat. This is what caught that wire that allowed the pilots to actually stop on the aircraft. So those that are made out of steel just needed a little bondo and, and so they are in pretty good shape. There are a lot of pieces though that we could not simply fix and put back on the airplane. So we have a couple of uh, fuselage fittings here and also uh, pieces for the landing gear that our restoration team of 75 restoration volunteers have had to create new forms in order to, instead of being able to fix these pieces that you can see are really damaged and in this case torn apart here, to create brand new ones using uh, brand new metal. So they create these forms and then ultimately have to bend the metal around the forms to create a brand new piece. So I have an example over here of what that looks like. So this is the instrument panel here. The instrument panel was destroyed from being down in the bottom of the lake for 68 years. So our team of technicians had the schematics exactly the measurements, all of the shapes and everything of where the dials would fit into. The first thing they had to do was create this wooden form. And you can see that wooden form here based on these schematics here. Once they had that wooden form, they were able to take a sheet of aluminum and start doing the cutting out and ultimately bending all of this metal around these forms. So that allowed us to recreate this instrument panel sitting on the base, which we were able to save from the aircraft itself. And voila, we've got some instruments. We're gonna be putting those in here during our restoration process. So it is really amazing for people to come to the Air Zoo and be able to see our restoration team 
doing this work. Be able to talk to them. They would really love to engage with you and all the cool stuff that we're, they we're doing to really restore these aircraft to their former glory. So we invite all of you to come down to the Air Zoo's Restoration Center and see this incredible work in action as we're working to restore these beautiful aircraft. And not only will you be able to engage with our volunteers, but we want you to come and take part in these amazing restoration projects. Cannot wait to see you soon.